everyone, there's three questions with Dr. Gladys Cruz. There we go. I'm so excited about this. All right. I have met Dr. Gladys Cruz a little while ago. I had the wonderful privilege to actually keynote at Quest R3 BOCES. And she told me before we even got on to the podcast with Quest R3. I actually thought there were three Questars, but it's actually three communities that you serve, right? That That's what it is. Yeah, three counties. Uh, three counties. Rensselaer, yeah. Columbia, and Green counties. Yeah, and they were seriously. Uh, and and I asked how you like to refer to, and even I said you are Do Dr. Gladys Cruz. You're like call me Gladys. I'm like if I ever become a doctor, I want to make everyone. I'm just gonna change my name to Doctor. This is gonna be like Madonna, just Doctor. <laughs> so you did ask me to refer to you as as Gladys. Um, your people were so amazingly kind. By the way, I just want to make sure that you know that, and I I already know you know that. But they were so kind to me. So many of them reached out. So if any of them are watching, which I hope they are, I just want to say a special thank you. And obviously, uh, I know how proud you are uh, of your group. Absolutely. And thank you. You did an amazing job setting thank the tone you. for the day. Yeah, they, they, it was easy. They were they were a really great group. So um, Dr. Cruz is actually, you know, doing several roles. Superintendent is going to be the president of AAS, uh, AASA. Um, and also, you know, connect with other communities. We were talking just, I, I honestly don't even know how you do everything. Like you're doing a ton of stuff right now. And so we'll talk more about that in another podcast, but um, you have a really storied uh, education career. You're doing a lot of amazing things. When you look at your own career and you think about the teachers that you've worked with in the past, you know, who's really inspired you? Who's someone that you really think of and why? So, um, of course, it's hard to choose one because I had uh, some amazing teachers. I think about the um, teachers when I went to Puerto Rico. So uh, I, went to, I went back and forth between New York and Puerto Rico. And when I went to Puerto Rico in fifth grade, I was in fifth grade, um, I was a limited Spanish proficient there. And um, I was not doing so well in uh, social studies in Spanish. And uh, thankfully, um, my science and my math teachers came to the rescue. I was doing extremely well in both science and mathematics. And they asked the teacher who taught both, actually, taught uh, both uh, Sp uh, Spanish and social studies. Mm. They said, just give her some time give her time till the end of the year. If at the end of the year, she is still struggling and has these grades, then you put them in her, in her record. But just look back at her record. Her, she had amazing grades throughout her, her, her five mm. previous four years. And I know it's the language. So um, I was fortunate that these teachers actually, um, uh, came and they were my heroes at that point. Um, because at the end of, uh, sixth grade, so I was there in fifth and sixth, at the end of sixth grade, I was two of, uh, a one of two high honor students. Um, so I really stepped up to, you know, their expectation. They, they were, they told the teacher, just give her some time. It's the language. And I was not going to put them down. So they, it, every time I think of a teacher, I think about them, um, in terms of really, um, making me th even think of doing, you know, doing good for others, mm -hmm. you know, because they stepped in and saved me. That, that That's so, and there's, there's so much that is so applicable to how we do learning today in schools. And as you know, as an administrator myself, there's a lot of times where parents were like really nervous about their own children. And I'd say, I say the exact same thing your teacher said. Just give them time, right? Like kids sometimes learn um, at different paces. There's I can't remember. There's a Malcolm Gladwell book, and it talks about actually, and you know, being from Canada, it talks about sometimes hockey players that are born in the first three months. They actually are typically the ones in the NHL because when you're four or five, you're almost like you know nine months older is is like a big chunk of your life. And so they're actually given this advantage based on the cutoff dates of when they play. 
And sometimes when we're, you know, we're, we're kind of reading students, they, there are different levels, there are different things, but you know, if you give them space and get there and it's, there's a lot of conversations about assessment right now, how we're assessing kids, if kids actually understand all the stuff they need to understand by the end of the year, my argument is always, then they should, they should be able to, you know, get the top grades that they're, uh, because they understand the stuff, not be, it's not that they know it at a certain date, but they're willing to grow there too. And so Thankfully, your teacher saw that in you and gave you that space because not, we know this. It's not always the case, right? That does happen in some schools. It's like, no, if you don't know this by here, then you're kind of a lost cause. And and that 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 is so unfortunate. So I think your success is a, is a tribute to that line of thinking for sure, right? Absolutely. I love that. Yes, because I was, I was limited Spanish proficient in Puerto Rico. In New York, I was limited English proficient. So right. it was, you know, that going back and forth. I love that. And so you, you, I actually got to meet several of your administrators and they were just absolutely wonderful people. Got to work with them. Very kind, very welcoming. Never got to meet, you know, and it says something because I never actually got to meet him in person because the event was virtual. We connected that way. And to actually be warm through email and through virtual is it's like you gotta be there's gotta be something special so i know you work with a, a, a great group of administrators i know uh several of your colleagues at the national superintendent uh organization they're they're absolutely wonderful as well so when you think of all the incredible administrators that you've worked with maybe you were you know you you had when you were a child who's someone that you really think of you know that that made an impact on you and why so I, I would have to, uh, again, it's hard to choose one, right? Because right. You, I, I came across so many am amazing individuals. I think about my um, uh, previous uh, district superintendent here, um, uh, Dr. James Baldwin, not the writer. Um, right. And um, he, 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 was, um, he was that person that always like saw something um, more in you and he and he um tapped me at different um periods during my 25 years here and said would you lead this uh department um and i would say uh let me think about it <laughs> mm. of course that i would say sure let me let me take this challenge on but i i think about him because he he was that person that always um uh, looked at strength yeah. of the of of the other of the individuals, and um, he would give me space to really be creative, um, and uh, and 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 that gave me the opportunity to really turn a, uh, pro, a department into a premier department our school improvement department is amazing um and uh it, it it was it and when i took it we had zero staff and it had a deficit in the budget so i had no money and no staff great way to start um and i i you know i think uh i don't think anybody thought i was going to be able to pull it off but I saw it as a challenge and I started to look like for, I, I started to say, to do research. And I said, what's right. the best way to really change outcomes for kids? And um, I started to ask around, do you know a really good teacher who's just retired who in mathematics? And I started to look for retired individuals who I could come bring in. And then I would say, would you like to be a, um, embedded staff developer and they would say what is that and i'm like it's whatever we want it to be <laughs> and it's that whole That's and awesome. so i created this uh amazing department um and uh we have uh, a specialist across that work across the region and beyond um but it, it was that that he, he really allowed me to experiment to take risks you know so it was uh those those things that really that i i remember and he's he's an amazing individual well the one thing i'm going to correct you on because you said this you're like nobody thought i could pull it off i'm like well actually dr baldwin did because he there's no way he'd put you in that position right and i think that th we were just talking uh before the podcast about that book unreasonable hospitality and i suggest it's it's really i i truly one of my favorite books that i've read in the longest of times 
And I was looking for the quote while we were talking because I was like, oh, this is exactly what they shared is that sometimes you have to put people in positions where they don't know if they can do it. Like it's it's leading them up, right? And you're pushing their their capabilities. And as soon as you told that story, I'm like, oh, my, this is just what they were talking about in that book. That's what Dr. Baldwin did it for you, that you weren't necessarily, I think some of the best leaders I've ever met share a story about someone seeing something in them that they didn't know and it and it excelled. And and maybe they weren't it they, it was almost you weren't ready for it, which was but you but you had the capability and that's what he saw which I, I absolutely love so obviously he saw something really incredible and, I, and are you, you still connected with dr baldwin have you, have you? I, I am so um he is the senior deputy commissioner at the state education department um and um i i often will go out to lunch with him or obviously. you know he's one of these people i can pick up the phone and say hey i'm dealing with this um, and he, he's, uh, he's a great mentor. All right. Dr. Baldwin, just in case <laughs> Don't get a little shout out horn, right? So I love it. All right. So last question, and you've done some really incredible things in your educational career, but we, uh, one of the things that, you know, I talked about when I was with your staff and you and I talked about before we got on here is how important it is that we are continuous learners, that we are continuously growing no matter where we are in our career. There's no, there is no position in education where you are just done and you know everything. We gotta continuously grow and evolve as you do as a superintendent. But if you can go back to your very first year of teaching and talk to you know young Gladys Cruz uh, getting into the profession, what advice would you give to her? So I would say to her, t don't be afraid to take risks, mm -hmm. um, to try new things. Uh, always keep your students um first so you know keep whatever you do whatever decision you make make sure you have uh students um in your mind um and uh and and you know bring in the parents mm -hmm. um you know i can tell a story of when i was uh, teaching uh, english in puerto rico and the parents would come by and they would say, oh, my goodness, Mrs. Cruz, I really want to I really want to work with my my son or my daughter at home. But I don't know any English. Mm -hmm. And I said, OK, so that summer I spent the summer creating tapes and I created a whole parent engagement program. Let's learn English together. And <laughs> That's so awesome. So, so uh, I did a manual and this was on my own time. Nobody asked me to do right. this. Um, and, uh, and, and I, and then you remember the cassettes? Yeah. You know, oh, I remember cassettes. Podcasts, don't it. remember cassettes. Don't know I cassettes. Remember. But I did the, I, I, I recorded um, lessons and, and, and different um, activities. And then I would have a log for parents to sign in. If they didn't have the a cassette player, I would lend them one. I did a lending library. You know, it was uh, it was great. And this was about you basically uh, invented virtual learning, but it was through cassette tapes. Like you were way when the when the pandemic hit, you were like, "Hey, who's got cassettes? <laughs> I know what I'm doing here. I love that." You know, one of the things I really love about that story, you know, because I I often shift the roles between you know educator and dad right? Like, depending on what I hear, what's going on in the moment. I, I don't know how good those cassette tapes were, right? And I don't, you probably, it'd be funny if you go back and listen to them. I guarantee you that that made such a connection with those families, right? Like how powerful that would be. And, you know, that you're helping them. And it, this is another thing we were talking about, how, how important school is seen as, you know, central to our communities and how we all work together and how that is so much better for kids. So I, I love talking to you. I'm excited to, to learn more about you and your work. And uh, again, thanks for having me work with your district and uh, you're, you're just amazing people, obviously embody much of what you're talking about. Everyone, thanks for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.